administration or double registration as empowered by section 12 of the uh, Electoral Act. Then, uh, uh, now we are now uh, issuing the PVC, that is the result of the social contract we engaged when we did the uh, continuous voter registration exercise. That is the end point is the uh, uh, issuance of the PVC to show that you are actually uh, registered and prepared to vote. Okay, prior before now, we conducted a party primaries. We monitored the conduct of party primaries and all political uh, activities. Equally, right now, we are monitoring the finance uh, uh, movement of political parties as they spend their money in lieu of uh, campaigning for uh, governance. Then, we are issuing the services. We are equally engaged for our And those are going to be providing officers via the federal government agencies. And those that are going to for election. We are ready. All right. Uh, I can tell you for this interview. Let me run points that, that relations. You train more people, stakeholders, and engage with political parties. You engage foreign parties. Yep. CR exercise, the BVAS, the issuance of PVC. You monitored conduct of primary, uh, party primaries. And then you monitored spending limits of political parties. There are about uh, seven or eight points there. Quite interesting. However... Okay, then I want to, di- I want to digress a little I want to go to the reasons why this election of 2023 is going to be a very different ballgame. Now, with the appendage of Mr. President's uh, signature in the Electoral Act, that uh, um, made it the Electoral Act of 2022, which is uh, a primary extant law we're going to use for this election. And um, joining our regulations for the election, but the most primary law we're going to base on is the Electoral Act. That is the appendage of the signature of Mr. President had validated uh, the usage of an uh, electronic device to conduct this election. This is via accreditation and revision of results. Then, during the accreditation, we are going to use the Biomodia Voter Accreditation System and the INEC Result Green Portal in remittance of results. The accreditation system we are going to just for uh, facials and the fingerprints. We're going to get the facials of the finger and the fingerprints of the voter before the voter goes on with the ballot paper to append the thumbprint of where he chooses or she chooses to vote. This has made our process now to be technological driven and it has made this uh, story so that fans will not be touching on, on the results or whatever is the wish of the masses that are going to be held so sacrosanct. Now, section 47 and section 50 of Two of the electoral act is the power that gave this um, the process uh, the technologically driven uh, uh, way to conduct uh, the elections. Then provision of assistive aid to people living with disabilities. Uh, that is section uh, 54 of the electoral act has made it possible for those that are living with disabilities to try their best to cast their vote on the election day. That is, those with albinism will not be uh, where the sun is shining, but the fine glasses are going to be produced, sign language operators are going to be produced, make sure that the, the collection centers, in case if there is this at the polling unit, for any of them to assist any person that has uh, such impairment. So different clusters of impairment that we taken care of by this electoral act. Then section 65 of the electoral act has mandated that INEC must pop a committee to review any results declared uh, or by Dure, declared by Dure or by undue influence from any external force if the returning officer complains of such action. And that has the power to now pop a committee to review such results in order to declare or not. These are most of the new innovations that have come into uh, our electoral process that is going to make the election of 2020 a different one. All right. So, Ms. Asolo, we, 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 have, we have a break in about three minutes. Now, okay. the Electoral Act is supposed to make the difference this time. I was actually going to... Excuse me. I was going to ask earlier about some of the things you listed and how previous elections had also done this. They had reviewed past elections. They had engaged foreign partners. But in your defense, as you state... Uh, the Electoral Act had not become the Electoral Act at the time. These of our development partners, they, all of them, the development partners assist us 
the capacity building. Okay. Now, now, yes, now, building, so that we will not be able to uh, face the electorate. Okay. We will not be able to enlighten the citizenry of Nigeria. Mr. Osolo. So let's let's go to yes. the Oshu elections where overvoting was recorded and in certain instances the beavers did not function. Now, the electoral okay. act obviously covered that particular election. But if if it serves yes. as a litmus test to what is to come for 2023, I don't think that the beavers uh is doing very good. Yes, uh, the uh, Oshu election is a judge very credible, credible and acceptable globally. Because uh, the little skirmishes or the little kitchen problems we had is just uh, below 1%. Uh, right now, uh, because of the Australian election, we are upgrading our software that the people must function anywhere you take it to, with network or without network. We have the, uh, the ones that are comfortable to work where there is uh, no network or any service provider of the, uh, 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 the network. Then... Uh, the, the overvoting recorded in Osho was cancelled because Section 51 said that anything on top of the number accredited before voting shall be cancelled. So it was cancelled by the... And they are still in court. They are still in court and I, I don't know... Uh, I cannot talk of anything that is subsidized because it's in court. Uh, so I don't want to put myself in trouble until the judgment comes out. I think there is a Supreme Court now. Yeah, but so, if they are still in court that, trying to... You trying to get an yes. outcome of that, you cannot categorically have faith in beavers because we are still yet to get the result of that deliberation. You, yes, you cannot hack into the beavers because the beavers have already given content of those that registered within that polling unit. And if you come up with a fingerprint and the facial, I have never seen where fingerprint is the same in the world. It is unique and it is for one person. So I don't know how somebody can manipulate the beavers or surpass the activity of the beavers. I don't know. Don't going around collecting numbers from the uh, uh, PVCs. There is an effort in futility. They are wasting their time because you cannot approach the assistant presiding officer one who is going to check their uh, family voters card whether it is in tandem with the playing it they are going to use or not. All right, Mr. Osolo. Preliminary examination we... has to be done by INEC ad hoc staff okay. that are on oath to conduct. Yes. We have to take a break now after Hello? the break. Hello, can you hear oh. me? Okay, take a break. Yes, after the break, yes, we... I'm you. <laughs> we talk some more. Please stay with us.
Info, I'm Sam Oracle Chinedu. Of course, here we bring updates on the elections from the candidates to the voters and other related issues. Our focus this morning is the preparedness of INEC for the 2023 elections in River State. My guest is Mr. Mark Usulo. He's a head of voter education and publicity, INEC River State. You're welcome once again, Mr. Usulo. Thank you very much. All right, it's important to know that we are live on Facebook and Twitter. That means you can watch as you listen. Go on those platforms and drop your messages. Now, before the break, we were talking about the beavers. If Oshu serves as a, yes. lit, as a litmus test for beavers, I don't think it's yes. doing very well. Now, you said these are, you know, sprinkles of skirmishes, as, <clears throat> as you put it. But there are countless cases, in, in, in particular... There was a 78-year-old woman. Her name, Siambola Grace. She made headlines in different news platforms where she left her home early to exercise her right. And after countless trials, the beavers failed to accredit her. And she could not vote. Now, this is a story that made the news. I'm sure there are others that we may not have heard of. So, in light of this, do you still have faith in beavers? Yes, the beavers is the best option that the Nigerians have to use in accrediting uh, would-be voters on election day. Uh, it is very correct, and uh, you know, in every general rule, there must be an exception, uh, either by force major, or which force major means natural occurrence. Uh, if it is only the woman that did not vote and every other person voted in Ocean State, we have achieved a tremendous success. Um, I attribute the awesome election via the beavers as the best we have had because uh, uh, we are basing our reports from uh, the foreign and local observers. Uh, I wasn't there particularly, but there were contingencies from River State that went to that auction for the election. And uh, by their reports, I know the election was a judge credible and acceptable globally. So I don't see any reason why such later infinitesimal proportion of uh, uh, negativity can be used to generalize uh, all, all we had on a uh, Day election. Uh, I am saying that the beavers is the best option that has happened to Nigerians as regards uh, checking the identity of those that is going to vote on election day. And the law has made it possible that we can be using the accreditation system to check over voting by section 51 of the electoral act that said that anything that supports the number of the by the beavers shall be a third nullity and the, the, the result from the polling news shall be declared as an anomaly. So I stand by this and this show goes to showcase transparency and the utmost uh, professionalism in our conduct uh, during the uh, elections. All right, so let's go to PVC collection. A lot of people have said that at the current rate it doesn't give them confidence of INEX preparedness. I personally was at the collection point on your way to Eliozu. And the, the crowd yes. I saw there was not encouraging Mr. Usulo. And not just that, the pace of progress was slow. We might have the deadline okay. crossed and enough people may not have collected the PVC if work continues to move at this okay. rate. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. I uh, would really like you to revert your mind back to what happened uh, during the uh, last uh, continuous voter registration exercise, where yeah, people were now turning up and uh, uh, between to the last few days to closure of the continuous voter registration exercise, we had a serious search in our line of property. Um, I, I attribute such behavioral tendency to the typical nature of Nigerian people. No matter how you educate them or sensitize them, they would like to do their bit and their wish, depending uh, on the behavioral tendency. We have witnessed this so many times, so many episodes and so many occasions, whereby any activity INEC is doing, they may not turn up early and on the last day they will, everybody would like to have uh, his right to be uh, acknowledged by the commission by allowing them to perform their civic duty of registration or picking up the PVC. You will see that before 22nd of January, there will be a surge in all INEC offices where they are having quest to collect their PVC. But the commission in its magnanimity has uh, uh, made a policy statement that uh, from the 6th of January to, to the 15th of January, we are going to devolve to the registration areas whereby we will take the cards closer to the people, putting into consideration the marginalized group. The marginalized group are the women.
women, the youth, and people living with disabilities, equally the aged people, so that they can be able to have access to this card before the date of uh, closure of uh, issuing this card. Then uh, after the uh, 16th of January, 15th of January from 16th, we are going to refer back to the local government area, offices of INEC, where we issue this card up to 20 seconds of um, uh, January before we stop. And our purpose in issuing this uh, permanent voter card is for us to prepare for the election proper. And it is in tandem with the legal framework uh, of the Commission that, that, uh, and the extant laws, anyway, uh, adjoining the policy of the Commission as well, so that we, we get it right. These, all these are the pragmatic roadmap to delivering a credible election come 2023. All right, it's important you're a part yeah. of the conversation. The numbers to call are 70 923 If you have any questions for my guest, my guest is Mr. Marco Sula, the head of voter education and publicity, INEC, River States. Our question is, how do you perceive INEC's preparations for the 2023 election? You can send messages to WhatsApp as well, 80 416. There's an important question here on WhatsApp, Mr. Osulo. It says, ask the guest, yeah. is there a way someone can confirm electronically that their card is ready for collection without having to go to the ward where he registered? Yes. There is a way to confirm that your card is ready for collection by knowing that you are equally a registered voter. Immediately you get to know that you are a registered voter, then your card will be ready. But I want to, I will give them the website, but I want to let the people know that the card we will taking delivery of from the INEC headquarters are those that registered from January to March. And those that did a reprint of uh, those that did update and we had a reprint of their PVC. Then equally those that did transfers uh, between the January to March, their cards are ready. This is the first batch of the PVCs we have received from uh, INEC headquarters. We are still expecting more. As the day goes by, we'll be taking delivery of the PVCs from INEC headquarters down to River State. This is, this is uniformly done in the whole nation. So uh, I want people to equally um, be going to the local government areas of INEC uh, where the, uh, we pick up their PVCs and uh, equally the local government area where they tend to stay and vote. That is where they go for their PVCs. And for you to ascertain that there is a voter, that their PVC is ready, you have to click to voter.inecnigeria.org. Voter.inecnigeria.org. If you click to this website, it will bring out your state, it will bring out your local government and your ward and your poly unit so that you can check whether you are a valid voter to a uh, valid voter that can vote in 2023 election. This website, I will mention again, you have to take note of it, voter.inecnigeria.org. In this website, you will now obey the command of the website online and you equally get to know whether you are a credible voter to vote in 2023 election. All right, let's, let's take some calls now. Hello, good morning. All right, call back if you can, 70 923 Zero seven zero zero nine two three zero nine two three. Please turn off your radio as you call. Go straight to the point. Tell us your name, where you're calling from. Make your voice heard. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Good morning. What's your name? I am Comrade Jimbo. All right. From Gokara Local Government. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, my complaint is that a few days ago I went to the INEC office in Gokana and I noticed that. Uh, I wanted to collect my uh, PVC, and they said my own was a double shooting, and my name is not on their register, that if your name is not on the register, you cannot vote, because the people will not recognize that. So I want to know, I want to know where, what is going to do about that, because up to now I have not collected the PVC I supposed to collect, but the PVC is with them, but they say I cannot collect because they have not ratified on that. All right, hold on, Mister. M- planning on that, Mister. Osola, did you get a question? Yes, yes. There is a policy statement on that. The reason why they told you that is that INEC has not taken decision as at that time you went on the proper procedure.
decision to take. Uh, that time you went, uh, they, they are not issuing the cards because we abide by the rules and regulations and all the instructions we are getting from our own headquarters. And at the time you went, they have not uh, told the ICT uh, directors on the actual uh, line to do. Um, what was the order then is that they will not issue the PVC until they get their name put in the register because, because the time we, we created a policy unit that are going to be closed back to people where they will vote without taking a long distance, we had to uh, share photos to all those polling units. And secondly, uh, the threshold was 750 and uh, they were using the voting points as well to determine the polling unit. Now, there is a policy statement that you can be issued that PVC and taking the correct data that is on the PVC so that we can as well enter it in the register of voters, electronic register of voters. Because if your name is not in the electronic register of voters, the people cannot pop up their information on the election day. So you will get back to the uh, issuance officer at the local government. They will attend to you properly now because this uh, policy just came in last week and uh, we have disseminated the information to all the issuance officers or in the INEC uh, and they are obliging by such uh, order. So you get back to the local government where you, you, you saw your PVCs and uh, they will issue it to you and take your particulars, accurate particulars, for our submission to ICT department All right. for effective uh, uh, use. Yeah. Let's take some more calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, what's your name? Can you speak up, please? All right, go ahead. Please, I did confirm July. I don't know whether it's uh, ready because I've been going up to. So that's number one question. The second question is this, please. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. I'll I'll repeat the question. Please go ahead. Okay, I should repeat the question. Yes, please. The first question is is this. I transfer uh, June this year. Okay. I did transfer. So I've been going up to a swear that it's not ready. Okay. So I don't know from now. That's not one. And the second question is this. Uh, I happen to uh, come down from northern part of uh, Nigeria. It's as simple as you say. But the the truth is that there are some uh, threats. So those threats now, people are coming with my brothers and their family and other friends. They are coming, relocating that after election, they will go back. Okay. Now, what will be their case in times of voting? All right, thank you very much. Now, his first question, Mr. Osulo, is that he did a transfer yeah, yeah. in June. He's trying to know if his card is ready. And there are people... No, re- not yet ready. Yeah, there are people relocating with the hopes of going back after the election. What is their fate as regards voting? Okay, why are the people relocating? Well, I have no idea. Hello? He's no yeah, longer with us. The, people relocating? the call, the call has ended. Okay, that if they are okay, if they are relocating because of uh, expectation of uh, violence or election violence to ensure uh, within the period of election, you will tell them not to because uh, we have our uh, full time engagement with the interconsultative inter executive committee on election. <laughs> Hello? Oh, my. They're all members. Even my humble staff in the state is a member. So that is why I can speak categorically about what is obtainable now. We are engaging with them and we are nipping, we are trying to nip this violence in the board by mapping out all the flashpoints of violence during the election, any sort of uh, commissions or youthful brigade are to be taken care of. We are taking that as a uh, Taking the statistics of that coming from uh, early indications from the electoral officers and our submission of this to the ISIS, we are deliberating on it on how to cope whatever situation that we arise there from. So I don't think public should uh, uh, 
uh, have fear. I want them to discontinue any uh, intimidation whatsoever in its entirety and be able to remain in a particular place so that they can cast their vote and exercise their franchise. Uh, I assure them, and uh, I'm speaking from the words of the, the Commission, uh, even the, uh, the destruction of uh, INEC uh, facilities in nationwide, we have received uh, 50 attacks from INEC between uh, 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 2019 to 2022, and uh, I think uh, they are taking uh, effective measures. They have deployed uh, uh, armament to our facilities nationwide, and instruction has been given by IT to contract of police to take care of INEC facilities. So I don't think anybody should be afraid of uh, any upcoming uh, violence and uh, to leave the uh, exercising his or her franchise. So as uh, an influencer and as a media man, you have to tell the public to let them stay safe past where they are so that they can be able to exercise their franchise because their wish uh, is very sacrosanct and uh, is going to be upheld by the commission because that is our duty. Yeah, Mr. That is why we are conducting the election yes. to make sure the wish of the people comes and their vote comes as well. I'm certain the public can hear you. That's the idea behind this this conversation. But just to be clear, did you say that security agents have been deployed to every INEC facility nationwide? Yes. Security agents, even if you come to INEC head office, I mean, we see soldiers, civil defense, and police. All INEC all facilities here. nationwide, all? That has been the instruction and it's, it's been carried out. It's been carried out. I went to Oibo, I saw police, Oibo area office. I saw policemen there. I went to a board now. I saw policemen there. We had the resident electoral commissioner, Dr. Johnson, uh, 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 Dr. Johnson Sinikem. Uh, yes, has uh, just taken a duty uh, tour and has uh, just gone around of population tour and has uh, just gone around as well to know the progression towards the issues of the PVC. And uh, we get reports from local government. That's why I, I am able to speak to you categorically that. Security has been pushed. Men with uh, 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 armed men have been pushed to all our facilities nationwide. And that has been the instruction of the Inspector General of Police. All right. And it's being carried out. Let's no. take comments from WhatsApp. Text from Oibo speaks on election violence in River State. He says he feels really sorry for INEC. What happened in River State in 2015 and 2019? or on the Falga constituency to rerun election in 2018, especially on election day and in the immediate aftermath during collation, cannot be blamed on, on INEC in any way. When people with violent tendencies are thrown up by political parties, what would INEC do? INEC cannot determine the characters of those selected by parties, Tex says. And Tex goes on to ask for now... Yes, sir, but we are, trying, we, we are trying to lead that to the board by sensitizing the youth that they are going to use in such actions. Uh, we, we, we have engaged with them, and they have still reason to us why they should not indulge in any kind of brigandage during the electioneering activity. And, uh, and they are complying. They are now talking of leadership. If the youth uh, can turn now to start talking about how they will govern and uh, how thanking the federal government for making it possible the, 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 for the bill that has been signed into law not too, not too young to, to run. So uh, some people are clinging to such a uh, avenue to be able to get into governance. Well, that's some and people. That, that's that's some people, Mr. Usulo. For, for the few youths that might allow themselves to be used for the purpose of violence, how would that, they respond? That, that, that will be sensitizing them not to indulge in such action. And if they indulge in such action, we have our uh, uh, capacity situation room that controls the ISIS. And I've told you that before an election proper and after elections, we have put this into consideration via our statistics on how to cope election violence, post-election violence, and even pre-election violence. All this has been taken care of uh, election management system, whereby we take any indications of this election, uh, election management risk. Uh, in fact, we have taken care of and issues that border on security, we don't talk it in the open. They know what they want to do, and they know their demography, and they know actually their network. So I cannot go ahead to talk about security, whereas it is being put in place, and every stone is not to be left unturned as regards this. All right, so uh, I, I have. I, I am quite sure that the uh, 2020 election is going to be a different.
from Bogan. I have a few questions on different platforms connected to PVC collection. Can you once again tell people okay. how to go on the website to check if their cards are ready? That's one. Two, you said in January... Not, not uh, if they are valid voters. If you are a valid voter, you will know that your card is ready. And if you, if you registered by June, from April to June, your cards are not yet ready. Those who are issued now are from January to March. Those that did the uh, update, whereby we did reprint, from January to March, they are issuing theirs. Those that did transfer as well, they are issuing theirs. So we are, we are, we've taken delivery of this card now at first tranche of the cards we are receiving. More are to come. Those that are registered from June and July, they are still, we are still expecting it. More are to come. Then uh, uh, those that want to check, if they are valid voters, so that they will know whether their cards are there or not, they should click to our website, voter.inetnigeria.org. All right. Now, you said next year, in January, people will be able to get their cards from the wards. Can you please explain that further? Yes. Yes. I said we started by last Tuesday, Monday. That's the 12th of uh, December to issue this card. And uh, we will issue it at INEC area offices in all the local government area between that 12th to 5th of January. From, okay. 5th, from the 6th of January to 15th of January, we are going to devolve to the world called the registration areas. Okay. During elections, they call it what? But these are activities now, we call it registration areas. They are all located in, 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 in the local government areas, whereby people can now go to the world. I believe it should be at the collection center, which is the capital of the world, to collect their BBC. Right. And we do it we are ready to work, uh, uh, pulling in it by pulling in it. Now we are issuing it at the local government area. We are ready it by what? And if you come, we check your PU in the what? In the way we arrange it categorically. Then we are in the what? Called Arrangement. We are going to arrange it, pulling in it by pulling in it. All right, Mr. So Osolo. We are able to for administrative ease. Thank you very much. Yes. We are, we are, we are down to. The 6th of January. All right. To 15th of, uh, January. We're down to our very then, final so seconds. We'll back to the local government, as I told you earlier, from the 16th of January to the 22nd of uh, January. Thank you, Mr. Osolo. That is, that is as much as we can take for this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me, please. Have a, we are very grateful. a wonderful day, sir. Well, that's as much as can happen on Road to 2023. Join us again next Saturday at 8 a.m. for updates on the election. Stay with us. Nigeria Info. Right back after this. Holiday.